Aokigahara, one of the scariest places on Earth. Its terrifying reputation comes from its notoriety as a suicide hotspot. The Sea of Trees is said to be the final resting place for hundreds each year. Located at the base of Mount Fuji, Aokigahara plays a role in Japanese mythology and is considered to be one of the most haunted places on Earth. Ghost sightings and paranormal activity doesn't account for all of the terrifying goings on there. The forest is easy to get lost in and GPS rarely works inside. There are reports of the string rope used to help people navigate their way in and out of Aokigahara being deliberately cut. The Japan Times reported mysterious screamings coming from inside the forest. Evil spirits are said to reside in the sea of trees, calling lost individuals to their doom. Buddhist priests have set up shrines and altars in the forest to combat these evil spirits. Of course, the forest is most famous for its tragic encounters of dead bodies and cursed objects. Strange symbols with dolls nailed to trees have also been discovered. Aogigahara is not a place you would want to find yourself lost in. Here are three stories which may make you consider that suicide isn't solely responsible for the deaths in the notorious forest. After graduation, I joined an advertising company and I was made project leader. Each day was busier than the last. I was under enormous pressure as the project leader. Moreover, the results I were getting were not favorable and the atmosphere was terrible at work. I guess I was mentally and physically exhausted. One day, all the stress and pressure built to the point of explosion. I left work without permission, got in my car and hit the road. I didn't know where I was going, but I just wanted to disappear that day. I had nothing to be happy for. No family, no partner. Death would be easier than this, I thought. Death would bring an end. Or a new beginning. These thoughts swirled around my head as I drove. I didn't realize it at the time, but it was as if something was pulling me towards Aokigahara. I didn't even notice that I was heading towards it. I stopped the car, and without hesitation, I walked towards the Sea of Trees. It is said that if you enter Aokigahara, then you will get disorientated quickly and lose any sense of direction. Nevertheless, I walked in. I didn't really want to die. I just wanted to be at peace. I just wanted things to be easier. For a while, I walked down the path towards the forest. I was lost in thought as I walked. Oi! I heard a voice call. It surprised me. The voice came from a man in his forties, wearing work fatigues. I assumed he was a volunteer who patrolled the forest in order to prevent suicide attempts. This area is off limits to the public, sir. Oh, uh, sorry, I replied dreamily. Are you lost? Are you on your own? Um, I don't... Follow me, sir, he stated in an authoritative tone. I was worried that I was going to be arrested for trespassing. I obediently followed. I followed in silence for about 20 minutes. We were heading deeper and deeper into Aokigahara. I started to get worried. I thought we would head to the exit, but where we were going, we were going deeper into the forest. I could see something up ahead. It looked like a kind of rest area. A log cabin in the middle of the dense forest. Why would there be a log cabin in the middle of the suicide forest? I was more than a little surprised to see it there. The man opened the door for me and said, Get in. I walked in and he followed. From the outside it looked like a rest area, but when I went in it looked like someone had been living in there. There was a kitchen area and a single bed. The ranger pointed to a little wooden stool and said, Sit. I sat on the chair. It was very unbalanced. It felt like it could collapse at any moment. I realized that the chair was handmade. How weird. 
and wondered if it was made from the trees of the suicide forest. All around me were these rickety handmade items. The chest of drawers, the bed. They didn't look professionally made either. Something about this unnerved me. It was a red flag. The man sat down on the bed opposite me and abruptly asked, You want to die? There was an awkward silence. I stared at the man's face. He was smiling. I was seriously doubting if this was a forester or a patrolman or a volunteer or anything. I massively regretted going into this hut alone with this man. Why didn't I think? Did you hear that? I heard myself ask. I didn't hear anything, the man opposite me said bluntly. It was no mistake, it was a voice, a female voice. I tried to place the voice as the man opposite me stared at me with interest. It was coming from beneath my feet. I stared at the floorboards, between the cracks in the floorboards. Eyes appeared out of the darkness. Help me, please! A woman screamed at me. Shut up! The man roared. He flew into a rage and started stomping on the floor. He grabbed the hatchet from on top of the crudely made bookshelf, threw over the table, and pulled up the floorboards and marched down some mud steps towards a basement looking area. I saw my chance to escape, and I ran as fast as I could. The woman was screaming. I couldn't look back. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouted. I couldn't see where I was going, and I had tears in my eyes. I ran until the sun set. There in the darkness, I realized I couldn't run anymore. A flashlight was scanning the area up ahead. I shouted, Hey, I'm over here! with my last amount of breath. I was slipping in and out of consciousness. I had to get the word out about that hut. Maybe that woman could be saved. Then I realized I may have made a grave mistake. How could I have been so stupid? I thought in despair. How could I know that the person with the flashlight isn't the man from the hut? I don't want to die here, I thought. And that was my last thought before I lost consciousness. I woke in a hospital bed. I was told I was found by a man patrolling the area, a police officer. I asked him about the hut in the forest. The doctors told me that due to stress at work and getting lost in the forest, I could have been seeing things. The policeman stated that it was not uncommon for people to suffer visions in the suicide forest. The police didn't even search for that hut. They agreed with the doctor that it must have been a hallucination. I pray that it's true, but I know what I saw. It was too real. We all know that a lot of people choose to end their lives in that forest, but I can't help but think that not all of them are suicides. There is something very evil in that forest. I never want to go there again. This happened 10 years ago. Back then I was working for an IT company. It was a startup. I was often presenting to the president. One day, the president invited me to stay at his private villa close to Mount Fuji. I didn't know the exact location of where I was headed. I just had an address. I was driving along, looking for the boss's place. He said it was a villa, but there were lots of villas. He said there was a tennis court, but again, there was plenty of those. I arrived just after 4 p.m. There was a bit of a party, and the next day we had a meeting scheduled. Since it was summer, it was nice weather still bright in the evening, so I decided to take a little walk around the area after the party. The front of the villa was paved with a tennis court. The back of the villa 
faced on to the thick forest full of trees leading to the mountain. I headed to the forest to take in a bit of nature. It was nice. I wondered as I walked if these woods led to the famous suicide forest. After about five minutes, I saw someone walking up ahead, about 50 yards or so away. He looked about 40. He was walking with a little girl, who I guess was about five. Father and daughter, I thought. I watched them, and I realized something. They're walking the wrong way. They're going into the forest. I was suddenly suspicious. What was I witnessing? A crime or something? The sun was going down. There was something seriously wrong with this situation. My gut told me so. The man stared in my direction briefly. That suspicious look worried me and told me that my hunch must be right. What if this man was taking this kid into the woods to kill her? I thought. If I ran back to the villa and told someone that maybe this guy would take this little girl further into the woods, I might lose him. Well, I better not let him out of my sight, I thought as I ran towards them. Oi! I called. It was as if they both ignored me. They didn't turn round, so I shouted in a louder voice. Oi! Where are you going? Still, they remained unresponsive. They walked further into the forest. I tried chasing after them, jogging a few times, and even running, but the distance didn't seem to get any shorter. I was shocked. I took a quick look behind me. I couldn't see the villas anymore. Nothing but dark, thick trees as far as the eye could see. I was deep in the forest, and I was now lost. I must have gotten so obsessed with chasing after them that I strayed from the path. Not only that, but I had lost my way, and I had no idea how many twists and turns I had taken. It was getting darker, and I didn't know which direction to turn in. Moreover, I lost the man and the girl. Sh what do I do? I came to a huge tree. I felt someone's eyes on me. I couldn't shake the fear of being stared at. I turned in all directions, and then I looked up and noticed someone hiding in the tree up there. I heard breathing. I tried my best to control my own breathing. I tried not to freak out. Then, I heard a small voice whisper. It was a man's voice. You're lost. Another voice, the voice of a child, whispered. Yeah, he's lost. My veins turned to ice. I couldn't move. Maybe he will die. The man whispered. He might die. The child replied. I began to think that I was about to die. That's when I heard. Hey! Voices called. Two strangers were running towards me. I felt like I was about to collapse. Miraculously, this couple found me as they were walking through the forest. They calmed me down. I looked up, and the shadows in the tree were gone. I told them my story as they guided me out of the forest. They said that they didn't see a man and a child. I don't know what that was. I don't know how it led me into the forest. And I don't want to know what would have happened to me if those two walkers hadn't found me. I'm convinced. Something lives in that forest. Something evil. When I think back to those voices I heard, I tremble in fear. I was having dinner with a friend. The night grew late. We decided to go for a drive. We were on the National Highway. 
It was about 2 a.m. when we were driving alongside Aokigahara. The highway runs through the forest. We passed the occasional truck, but there were literally no other cars on the road that night. The forest is really dense and thick, and it's on each side of the road. There are no street lights on that road. We were heading towards Yamanashi Prefecture, cruising down the highway in the darkness of the famous suicide forest, when my car started acting strangely. The accelerator failed, and the car began to slow down. The battery seemed like it was dying. The car was slowing to a stop. Breaking down in the dead of night by Aokigahara is something we didn't need. In the middle of the day, the sea of trees can look quite beautiful and green. I drive past it all the time. However, when the sun sets, it's very unsettling, as you don't know what could be lurking in there. Before we came to a complete stop, I managed to pull into the hard shoulder. The engine was very faint. My friend told me not to turn off the engine because it might not start again once it's off. We had to call for help. Back in those days, mobile phones weren't as popular as they are now. Not everybody had one, and we didn't. We couldn't be helped. I had to go in search of a payphone. My friend stayed behind to try and keep the engine going. Because I had often traveled up and down this road, I knew that there were some tourist facilities not too far away. I hoped that there was a phone box in the car park or something. After about 10 minutes of walking, I saw the light of a phone box up ahead. I was so relieved. Due to how late it was, naturally there was no one in the tourist facility's car park or the area around it. All the lights were out. It was pretty eerie. The phone booth was the only light source in the darkness of the forest all around. I felt so dependent on that light source, on the phone booth. I walked faster to get to it. And then I stopped. There was someone in the phone booth, a young girl. She couldn't have been any older than primary school age. She was cowering on the floor in the booth. It was past 2 a.m. in front of the famous suicide forest in the dark. Why was there a young girl here? I tried to figure out a logical reason for it, but I couldn't. Although I thought this was strange and pretty creepy, I wanted to see if she was alright. Besides, I needed that phone booth, or I would be stranded in the woods. I called out to the little girl with caution. She looked up in my direction. She was wearing a denim skirt, and she had yellow sandals on. When she looked up, I noticed a big bruise on her face, just below her right eye. What am I getting myself into, I wondered as I approached the phone booth. This was no ghost story, or an urban legend. This was real, I thought. I spoke to her. It turns out she was told to wait in the car park by her mother. Her mother said she would be right back. And her mother went into the forest and since hasn't come back. I shuddered. Must be a suicide. Mum's not coming back. The young girl said. The girl held her knees against her chest as she sat and stared at the ground. She cast such a sad figure. I didn't want to leave her. To begin with, I used the phone to call a friend of mine who owned a garage, but of course it was the middle of the night and my friend didn't answer. I must have called him over ten times until his wife finally picked up. I explained about the car and asked her to call the police for the girl. She said, wait there, and hung up. I placed the receiver back on the hook. I looked down, and the little girl had disappeared. What? She was there a second ago. I looked all around for a sign of her, and that's when I saw her heading towards the total darkness of the forest. I began to panic. She was obviously searching for her mum. I was terrified for her. I chased after her. She was surprisingly fast, though. I don't know how many times I shouted at her to stop, but she wouldn't. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I was running double time, chasing her. The floor is made of lava earth. There are areas which are uneven. It's possible to fall in a gaping hole. If you fall down one in the middle of the night, it could be fatal. I finally got close to her. I reached out my hand to grab her by the arm, 
when someone grabbed me by my arm from behind. I was shocked and terrified as I was yanked backwards. I spun around. The person who pulled me back was my friend. Huh? I thought he was waiting in the car. Even though it was pitch black, I could make out his facial features. He was shouting something at me in a harsh, scared voice. What are you doing? He roared. I was surprised but more interested in finding that poor young girl in the forest. I tried to shake from his grip. I looked in all directions for her. I couldn't see anything. I said to my friend through gasping breaths, There's a girl lost in the forest. She went to find her mum. After I explained, my friend had a concerned look on his face. My friend began to pull me back towards the direction of the phone booth. I didn't see any girl, he said quietly. I was still panicking and fretting over the missing young girl. Missing in Aokigahara in the dead of night. How could I be calm? What could happen to her? My friend was very upset. He said that I hadn't been back in two hours, so he came to search for me. What's he talking about two hours? I thought. I could not have been any longer than half an hour. My friend made the good point that we can't search for the girl from the phone booth by ourselves, so we'd better call professionals. So we called my friend at the garage to see where he was. My friend spoke to him on the phone. I was still a little worked up. My friend said that our garage working friend said that he hadn't been contacted earlier that night. I said that was impossible. I said that I called and I spoke to his wife. He said that his wife hadn't been home all weekend. She had been visiting her sister and his phone hadn't rung that night. I spoke to someone. A woman. She told me to wait there. Like the little girl was told to wait there. We left the phone booth and legged it straight back towards the car. Who was that woman I spoke to and who was the little girl? I don't know if I imagined these things, but they felt so real. Could I have been overtired? I will never forget that day. It's the most terrifying thing that's ever happened to me. And it's still a complete mystery to me. Thank you.